We are gonna get a little spicy with it today. I'm gonna share with you the worst products that I've tried so far in 2022. I definitely feel like I'm missing some, but these were ones that definitely came to mind immediately that I was like, oof. And you know what? It doesn't mean that these products are like hot trash garbage. I mean, it also might mean that some of them are. But And some of these I was just simply disappointed in and expected better from the brand. But some of these also really are like kind of garbage to me. I do have, for a positive turn, the best makeup of 2022 so far, as well as the best palettes. So check those out. But yeah, I mean, I needed it to finish off the 2022 so far series with the worst, right? As always I mean this is just my opinion it is not set in stone so feel free to argue with me in the comments if you love any of these items love it love to hear it <laughs> for reference I have normal to dry skin currently it's leaning a little bit drier but I'm also a very very sweaty person so it's an interesting mix here just so you can get a feel for my skin type and kind of what I expect I am wearing these products on my face and I legitimately tried to get a good look like I really tried to make make my makeup look good and my base looks so dry not good but my eye makeup we'll talk about it because my eye, eye makeup looks really good <laughs> so let's get into it a lot a lot a lot a lot of complexion base products launched this year so naturally there was a lot of really great ones and then a lot of really bad ones so complexions taking over this video we're gonna start off with this one right here this is the Jaclyn cosmetics skin perfecting blurring tint this is just the oddest product now please know I did buy this before I moved to Florida so the color match right now is atrocious but it really does allow you to see how the product truly really just sits on the skin you can see the streaks it's really hard to work it into the skin it took a lot of finger blending and when I layer up anymore I do find that the product literally peels itself off giving you a really patchy base so yeah I'm not a big fan of this when I blend it with my fingers and take my time and really work it in I can get this to look decent but it's not worth the effort it's just an odd product if I layer it up it should not peel so yeah this was just a product that I could not get to work for me. I completely forgot about this until I was like going through my YouTube videos to see what I wanted to put in this video because I have no need to reach for this at all. So I did not like those. <laughs> Another one is unfortunately this one from Danessa Myricks. She came out with some really good complexion products, but this one was just a miss for me. This is the Yummy Skin Balming, Blurring Balm Powder. Yeah, this is not made for us dry skin girls. I mean, I've had a few of you guys who have dry skin who made it work, prepped the skin properly, all of that, but I really find that no matter how much I hydrate the skin, it really does emphasize the dryness on my face and it also just kind of sits on top of my skin. It doesn't really look like one with the skin, making it very, very unnatural looking. It provides a ton, a ton of coverage. In my demo, I applied as little as possible and you could see it emphasizing dryness that quite honestly, I did not even know was there. It just isn't a pretty look on my skin. So yeah, I know some oily people, you really, really like this. So that is something to note, but even like normal skin, I don't know. Like, you have to be really oily, I feel like, to like this. I, I know a lot of people like this, though, but I can't get behind it personally. It's too finicky for my skin. Okay, so the next foundation, I literally have four foundations. So this one, I always thought it was okay. It never stood out to me with the new foundation launches, but I wore this a couple of times last week, and I thought my skin looked really bad. So it just reminded me to put this in the video. The Kosas Revealer Skin Improving Foundation. So what's really trending in complexion this year is skincare, hydrating, glowy, all of that. I don't like the skincare benefit products. I feel like in terms of foundation, they sit on top of my skin, they make my skin look textured, they just don't look nice or smooth. This Kosas foundation is an exact example of why I don't like these really trending skincare foundations. And I know in theory it sounds wonderful, but like none of them look good on my skin. And you guys, I have dry skin. They should work for me. But this just looks really, really heavy on my skin. So when I first apply it, and I applied very little today, less is more with this 
this foundation. It looked good, but the problem is the way that this wears as the day goes on. It looks so heavy on my skin. It's just sitting on top. It's not, it's not a cute look. The last couple of times that I wore this last week, just kind of retesting it, putting something new in my rotation, I was not happy with the way that my makeup looked just a couple hours in. So, mm, yeah, no, me not likey. The next foundation that I have, now this one, it's like you either love it or you hate it. There's lots of opposing opinions, but I'm on the kind of hated side of the Charlotte Tilbury Beautiful Skin Foundation. Very similar characteristics to the Kosas. Again, it's supposed to be that skincare infused type of product for healthy, glowing skin. First of all, I swear this makes my skin look dry. <laughs> For it being a glowy product, my skin looks dry, it's too thick, it's a little bit harder to blend out. It, again, it sits on top of the skin. It just does not do my skin any favors. You know when you get a good foundation and your skin just looks smooth and perfected and simply better than how it looked prior to foundation? This is one where I feel like no favors are being done other than the evening out of the color itself. The texture of my skin just does not look better. So. I personally can't get behind this. It looks extremely heavy on my skin. I'm actually, at the current moment, wearing the Kosas on this side and the Charlotte on this side. And since they're so similar, I'm testing. I'm actually gonna end up wearing this, which is partially the reason why I tried to get a good look today, to see which one is worse or best. I don't know. I will say though, I kind of like the Charlotte a little bit more because I feel like I can mix it in with other foundations. And like if I mix this in with a matte foundation, I actually kind of like it and what this does to that foundation. So yeah, I'm, hmm, I will have to update you to tell you which side wore better, but I can tell you right now, my skin looks really dry. For both of these being glowy products, I think I might've put too much powder down. I don't know. I'll tell you what it is. I know what it was that made my skin look dry, but, but they're on even playing fields right now. They look the same. Okay, I have three concealers. So the first one is the Jaclyn Cosmetics Perfecting Concealer. Not just bagging on Jaclyn Cosmetics, okay? She adds a couple products in my favorites videos as well, but this launch was not good for me. Again, this one is so drying. So you'll see in the demo how if you let it set just a little bit, not even that long, it won't move. I had a hard time blending this out. I had to be quite aggressive with it and it just looked super dry on my under eyes. It's such an odd concealer. I've never come across such a fast drying matte concealer. Definitely don't use powder on the under eyes if you're not going to use this, but the second I put this on, I could tell my under eyes were just in need of some type of hydration. So yeah, this, this does not look good on my under eyes personally. So believe it or not, to try and rehydrate it, I mixed it with the KVD Good apple concealer and this is another one in the worst of but this is better than the Jaclyn so I tried to use this to kind of fix what the Jaclyn did to add a little bit more hydration and even smooth coverage on the under eyes. My problem with this is more so the wear time. I find that over time my under eyes begin to look a little heavy and really really creasy. You know I'm 26 I, I do have natural fine lines under my eyes just from smiling and, you know, existing and living. Everybody has those. But this, like, uncomfortably so emphasizes what I have on the under eyes. So, I don't know. The characteristics of it don't really remind me of the Good Apple Foundation. And it's really, really heavy on the under eyes. And it does not do me any favors. The last concealer that I have, this is a newer one, so I actually have a couple videos that I'm planning on talking about this more, so you'll get a demo in those videos. But yeah, this is not a good concealer in my opinion. I've used it a lot recently. This is the Psy Hydra Beam Concealer. Okay. So this does not give much coverage, which is fine. You know what? I think there's a time and a place for a concealer that doesn't give a lot of coverage. But it's the way that it just sits on top of my skin. You can literally see it sitting there, kind of separating. Because of the light coverage, it's really see-through. But again, it sits on top of the skin. It, you constantly want to go in with your sponge to like try and blend it in more, but it's never going to have a smooth appearance. If you're looking for a good lightweight concealer, the Armani Luminous Silk is a great light coverage. 
coverage concealer. But yeah, it, it's like hydrating, but in an unflattering way. It doesn't like blend into the skin. I don't know. I will do a demo in a future video, but this did not work out for me. The next product that I have is from Laura Mercier. This is a tinted moisturizer blush. Now, I have been able to make this work, and there has been scenarios that I've liked this product, but over time, I just think it's something that is a little bit too finicky. So many brands came out with some amazing cream cheek products that I just can't justify this one anymore. I think, you know, if you have a tinted moisturizer on and you use a little bit of this, it looks nice. But if you have something with like a little bit more of a light and up coverage, this gets really patchy. I don't know, like it soaks up into coverage of, from the foundation so quickly and it looks really patchy. So if you have, like I said, a really lightweight tinted moisturizer on and then put this on, it's fine. But the more you add on this, the more coverage and color that you want, the more uneven and patchy it's going to look. It just doesn't quite sit on the skin right. I feel like when I put this on top of my foundation, I can see my skin underneath like more so than I could before I put it on. It's oddly, oddly patchy, which is a shame because I really like the consistency of this. It feels really, really hydrating on the cheeks. But yeah, it doesn't give much coverage, which is fine. But when I try and build it up, it gets super duper funky on the face. So I have not been enjoying this, unfortunately. <laughs> I talked about this in my most recent speed reviews, but I just, I need to give this another moment. <laughs> this is the Melanie Mill Super Light Long Lasting Setting Spray. I think this works in terms of longevity. I think it's the reason that my face feels so dry, but in the long run, that's going to be good for longevity, but it's just very potent. Um, I feel like I'm literally spraying hairspray all over my face. Oh. Mm-mm. Mm -mm. Oh, it burns. And I can't breathe when I put it on, okay? And then when I'm done spraying it, it's like I have to wait another 10 seconds to clear the air because if I breathe it in, it's literally like inhaling hairspray. So the experience of applying it is just so terrible that I can't get past it. I It's bad. It's really, really bad and uncomfortable to apply. <clears throat> okay, I do have another cheek product. Sorry, I got a little bit out of order, but this is a powder blush from Chanel. I, I did dab into Chanel in the previous months. They haven't launched anything interesting, so I haven't been keeping up. But I did pick up a couple of the Blush Comets and Peach Cosmique. This came out in the very, very beginning of the year. This is not a blush. This is like a highlight and it's so unflattering on the cheek. I suppose if you're very, 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 very fair, you could make this work, but this is truly just a highlight. It is so odd that they marketed this as a blush. When I put it on my cheeks, it has this almost yellow turn to it, which is extremely unflattering. It literally is lighter than my skin tone and works better as a highlight, but the tone on it is unflattering as a highlight as well. Fair warning, man. Like this is a very, very expensive blush and it really upset me. They came out with two colors. The other color is fine but this one was just so odd and it looked darker online that's the thing like didn't market it for very very light skin and I just don't know who that's going to work for you know and then we're moving on to eyes so this color pop party proof eye primer makes the eyes look so bad and dry I mean I hope the demo does all the talking you'll see if you have even the tiniest bit of concealer on your eyes from blending it out like what left over it completely separates from that and makes your eye area look so so dry yeah I wouldn't recommend buying this a pattern with eye primers like even the Urban Decay primer potion kind of does that but this is just to the extreme it like completely ruined my base area on my eyes all right this is the worst product of 2022 I think I'm looking here and these are the ones that I'm the most offended by <laughs> So these are the Charlotte Tilbury Matte Eyes to Mesmerize. I do not know how this like got past testing, how they thought that it was a good idea to sell these. And I mean, they got the message because I feel like they pretended like they never launched these. Like we never heard about these again. These never hit the Sephora stores. 
thank goodness because these are super duper dry these like are like an eyeliner but they dry even faster than an eyeliner there is no creaminess to it whatsoever uh you can't really blend it out it's really hard to manipulate i was messing around with chocolate veil today it has been so long since i used it and i thought to myself well let me just try it let me just try it it took me so long to blend this out it is just so dry once you put it down there's like no budging None at all. I mean, my makeup was looking a hot mess after I put this on. This is just the base. Like, I fixed it. I'll show you how I fixed it. But no. No, no, no. These are so bad. If you ever come across these, do not buy them. They, no. Mm -mm. like impossible to work with and I'm somebody who can make a lot of makeup products work and I'm I'm experienced with makeup I've tried a lot of makeup I can do a good makeup look not with these I, I can't get these to work okay so this next item is an eyeshadow palette and honestly you guys I'm kind of doubting putting it in this video because it's saved this look because I was looking patchy, uneven, and unblended with the matte eyes to mesmerize from Charlotte Tilbury and this kind of saved the day but I am still going to talk about it because I really am disappointed in this. This is from Rare Beauty. This is the True to Myself eyeshadow palette and it's just like a huge downgrade from what they've launched before so they had these holiday palettes that were amazing quality it, just so good great price point really easy to blend i was floored and so i picked this up because i did a full dedicated review of rare beauty and i was so disappointed in this it's so different than those first palettes that they launched so the mattes are super duper sheer and you know what if you're very inexperienced with makeup or you don't like too much pigment like you like a very soft look this could be for you but as somebody who has the collection i do that this just does not stand out at at all so the mattes are super duper sheer they take a lot of building up and a couple of the sh these shimmers are okay this one is quite chunky and I was bagging on this glitter but I don't know if I'm bagging on it anymore because like I said this did save the day so to kind of blend out the eyes to mesmerize I used this peach shade and that's what finally got the edges here to be soft um, and to save the uneven patchiness on my eyelid, I actually did end up going in with this glitter, which I have called children's makeup. That's what this glitter reminds me of. But I'm not going to lie, you guys. It looks really good on my eyelid, so I might be taking that back. Now, I did get some fallout from it, and I feel like some got in my eye, which I don't like. I don't know. It's a really dry consistency, and it's very, very chunky on application, but over the brown base because there are brown glitters in here it actually kind of looks really good i'm not gonna lie <laughs> so i was going to talk complete trash about this palette but it did save my look and my look is good it's real good but anyways the next palette that i have i don't have too many palettes like i have not tried too many terrible palettes this year so these are more so disappointments as opposed to just being terrible quality we've done good with eyeshadow palettes this year nothing like super amazing i talked about that in the best palettes like i haven't been floored by a ton of palettes but not, not really been bad you know the brands are getting it down this one was pretty bad though from huda beauty this is the color block palette in orange and purple and you can get fine looks with it but the color combination i find to be a bit odd and the matte is so patchy right here it's so so bad it completely ruins the look at least uh, with my experience that purple completely ruins the look and i don't know huda beauty's just come out with so much this is just more so of a major disappointment as opposed to like being a terrible terrible eyeshadow palette neither of these are really really bad but I don't know brands have really improved on their eyeshadow formula because I don't have a terrible one to show you but those I've just had bad experiences with and they've rubbed me the wrong way okay next up I have an eyeliner this is from melt cosmetics this is the slick waterline eye pencil in the shade brown these are extremely hard to to maneuver they're called slick and they really are slick like too slick to the point where your eyeliner is just gonna like go everywhere you have no precision with this at all it slips and slides now the only way that I like to apply this because I've adjusted it to make it work for me is by putting a little bit down and then smoking and blending it out that's the only way I was able to get a decent look with this eyeliner I 
spread it along the lower lash line and you'll see that spread on the waterline was super duper uneven and so I had to go in with a brush to blend it out and make it smoky to make it look intentionally messy and then on the upper lash line don't even try to get a precise line with this you'll see what I had to do was put a little bit on the outer corners and then I used a small brush and smoked it out and then I actually did go in with a little bit of concealer out here to clean it up again to make it look more intentional and precise but that pencil is only good for smudging out and even then like that's just what I've done to make it work for me since it was already in my collection I don't recommend it I don't it's too messy no precision at all and it does smudge throughout the day okay so the very last item that I have I haven't tried too many terrible lip products this year but I found myself constantly being disappointed in the limited edition ColourPop Lux lip gloss formula particularly when they come out with the limited edition sets like these i find that these have like no pigment to them so you're paying extra to get a bundle of three of these lip glosses and they all are basically clear very 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 subtle differences that you hardly notice on the lips so yeah if you like the lux gloss formula yeah, I'd recommend only buying like one shade and calling it a day because they all look the same. You're paying a little bit extra for three of the same color. And if I'm being honest, I just don't like the Luxe Lip Gloss formula anyways. They have another formula that I much prefer, but these are like almost Vaseline-y. I mean, it's a better than Vaseline, <laughs> don't get me wrong, but the consistency of it reminds me of Vaseline. They don't give off much of a shine, and it's just not a good lip gloss formulation overall. Now, I can't speak for all of the limited edition sets of the Luxe Glosses. I could be wrong. Maybe some of them are great and some of them have pigment, but all of the ones that I've tried this year have been consistently like the same and yeah it's just been a constant disappointment for me because I'll open I'll swatch and then I'll realize oh I just added three lip glosses that are like the exact same color and again I don't even care for the formula that much so this is kind of like a general statement not just this taste of honey one from the Winnie the Pooh collection I've gotten many of these that I've given away I just don't know I don't want them <laughs> so anyways there we have it you guys those are the worst products of 2022 in my opinion of course if you want to argue with me down below feel free to do it but do it kindly okay <laughs> I don't normally do a lot of worst of long form videos on my channel but I do a lot of short form ones I don't know it's funny for me I'm a little bit more spicy in those but yeah anyways I hope you guys enjoyed this video and you found it helpful let me know down below your least favorite products that you've tried so far this year and I will catch you in the next one bye guys have a good one